starlit night. See all the wise men and their gold. See all the wise men and their gold. They have come as the prophet told. They have come as the prophet told. Friends, and welcome to worship this Christmas Day with the people of the Open Door Churches, the United Methodists of Salem Kaiser. I'm here with my colleagues and my pastoral friends. This is Pastor Alyssa Baker. This is Pastor Kalina Malua Kotoa. This is Pastor Zaida Werica. And I'm Pastor John Fleming. We're here to welcome you to worship on this holy day. Today's worship looks a little bit different than what uh, what worship looked like when we were gathering together as a community online during our first year together in the midst of the pandemic. But we are so happy to be gathered with you in this virtual space on this holy day. Let us worship together. Where in your community do you see signs that Christ is changing the world? I am the director of Congregations Helping People, and um, our office has reopened as of August 8th of this year, and we have been serving five days a week for three hours a day since that opening. I see signs that Christ is changing the world in the conversations that I'm having with people. While we're not really proselytizing in our agency here, I, um, I do offer as a resource uh, 
the opportunity to perhaps talk, knock on the door of a neighborhood church, even though they may not be a church that's contributing toward congregations helping people, but just even having a conversation and openness about, well, I don't really go to church and, and you know, sometimes just getting a foot in the door uh, by talking to somebody locally in their church might invite them, uh, invite them into the, um, into the brotherhood, a fellowship, um, establishing relationships wherever we can see them. And I think of those as opportunities to um, just, you know, promote a, you don't know until you go ask, you know, and, and that may be, you know, the, the one thing that will bring somebody to Jesus. And, and so I, I see that as a change, in, at least in this community, one story in particular comes to mind. It's a gentleman, a single father, uh, raising a young son. And the, the workings of agencies are not perfect. And so he found himself being cut off from his child care support for his son so that he could work. And that, that was for the entire month of September. So he had to stay home to care for his son because of a paperwork snafu in the background that occurred. And he also needed to pay rent and he was not working. And so he came in and um, I was able to assist him with his rent because um, uh, so that he could stay uh, and <clears throat> go back to work. Um, and that was going to happen the following month. Um, so short story long, is that I was able to assist him so that he could go back to work. Uh, the child care worked out, and um, it also happened to be the day that he came to see us, his son's little birthday. And so we were able to kind of do a little birthday party with some little toys and stuff that we gave him from here. And he was so thankful um, that um, he actually started to weep, which was so sweet that that he could be vulnerable enough in that moment with me to um, kind of just, you could just see that stress and that relief coming off of him. And that's just one itty bitty story. There are hundreds, not hundreds, there are a lot more stories like that where it's just the right moment, the right time, the right circumstances, the right help, and, um, and the gratitude was just evident. And that's what warms my heart is the the relief that it brings to people when you can help pull them from a financial emergency. At my old school in Washington and also at my church there and here too, there was a tree was set up with different tags of the less fortunate who needed like things for Christmas or for the holidays and people would anonymously pick a tag and shop for those people and then bring it back and those would be delivered to the less fortunate. Yesterday, I volunteered at the Habitat for Humanity Restore, and there, there was a bunch of people who can, like, donate different items and shop for uh, their families, and one of the workers there that I got to work with um, was doing cashiering, and sometimes when people would come up and there would be a price said, the person would either not like the price because they didn't have enough money or whatever and so the worker I got to work with was like don't worry about it I'll drop it down to this price no worries or this one's on me here and so he basically paid it for him or for the customer which was really really sweet and it just showed that there's people who really care about the less fortunate and want to help them. As an open door church young adult group we witness signs that Christ is changing the world by sharing in conversation about Christ's ministry. For us, we witnessed that Christ's ministry was centrally focused on neighbor love, love for one another, whether we saw eye to eye with one another or not. And in our community, we witness several places in which we have seen Christ changing the world through the tiny home ministries for the houseless community 
a sign of neighbor love and hope for the future. Through capital pride, from the inclusion of identity and the inclusion of generations and loving of neighbor. Many of the members of the Open Door Church Young Adult Group work with uh, children through the school district or nonprofit organizations and in that work have witnessed Christ changing the world through resources and support that are provided for children and families in need of aid. And many examples of this, including the Thanksgiving meals that were donated at Scott Elementary School. As an open door church community, we raised funds across our community and were able to help 30 families have Thanksgiving meal together this year. To backpack buddies, to clothing donations, and school supplies. Like a child we will be, like a ghost to defeat, like a child on the street, Jesus comes, like a child we once knew. Coming back into view, like a child born anew, Jesus comes. Where would you like to see more signs of change? I think I'd like to see more signs of change in... Um, and I would really like to see more churches join us, uh, join, join the churches that are already part of Congregations Helping People, not so much for the financial need that we have, but just for being able to spread the word that there, there is help in the community, there is hope in the community, that you don't have to go through these things by yourself. Um, quite often just having a conversation with someone that understands what they're going through that help guide them through the system and I just wish there were there were more there was more of that in the community that that grace uh, extended beyond the the churches that currently donate but to other churches in the community and that there's greater awareness of where um, where hope can be sought you know that immediate hope um, and so I feel uh, somewhat at this point that there isn't enough of that, that there isn't enough um, awareness and knowledge about CHP and the work that we're doing here for Jesus. My candle is my, um, in my little cubicle here. I light this candle every morning and I say a prayer for uh, wisdom and discernment um, and help. Uh, and it reminds me that our Lord and Savior is the light of the world. <clears throat> and so when I uh, turn around and talk with a client, uh, that candle is, is lit in my little space. And it just helps center me in whom I'm serving. I like schools because there has been some like drug abuse in different schools around the areas. And... That could seriously need help because doing drugs is not cool. There's also people like school shootings, which uh, my, my school actually got threatened a while ago. As an Open Door Church young adult group, we would like to see more signs of change when it comes to listening. All of our change topics came back to being rooted in listening. Um, listening in a conversation for what may not be said. Are we actively listening to our neighbors? To take time to listen, to not only hear, but to understand where people are coming from. And in conversation and in relationship, we hope to see change when it comes to judgment and assumptions and 
are encouraging one another to not be quick to judge or make assumptions. Rather not to judge at all because we're supposed to leave that up to God. We recognize the uniqueness of each and every one of us as God's children and we hope to see more change around how people treat one another with love and kindness um, and to have patience uh, when we disagree and to be able to still be in relationship and to help see one another's sides when we have differing perspectives to keep a listening ear and an open heart. We greet your arrival with wonder, loving God, that you would humble yourself and come to us as a child. The last few years have humbled us with grief, loneliness, exhaustion, and anxiety, yet we have experienced your presence and light among us. Continue to shine your light in our darkness and illumine our path of compassion and love with your presence. Open our eyes to the blessings you've given us in our human connections, our virtual connection with family and friends, and the bounties of your goodness. May we be mindful of those who are without loved ones, those battling illness, poverty, oppression, and despair, and those who long for hope. We pray for those who are suffering near and far that you would surround them with compassion. Each day may we hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell, O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Amen.
this season of Advent, we have been journeying through our Houses of Hope series. On our Christmas Eve service and our Christmas Day service, we have focused on two uh, community organizations uh, that we as a pastoral team and church community support as places of hope in our community. And uh, because of that, we have chosen for our Christmas offering to go to support congregations helping people and also family building blocks, which are two houses of hope in our community. If you would like to financially support uh, both family building blocks and congregations helping people, we invite you to go online to our website, opendoorchurches.org, and click on the giving tab. And uh, there you can uh, give online and mark your offering, Open Door Churches Christmas offering. And uh, we will split the offering between the two organizations. If you feel more uh, comfortable uh, giving to your local congregation, you may do that as well uh, and mail in your checks or drop your checks off at the local congregations and just make sure everything is labeled uh, for Open Door Church's Christmas offering and we will be sure to get your donations to these two houses of hope in our community. I invite you now to join me in our offertory prayer today. Thank you, God of love, for the promise of this season. We are grateful for the generosity aroused in us by Christ coming into the world. May these gifts represent a new spirit of joyous sharing among us for the sake of all your children everywhere. Amen. Merry Christmas, friends. I am Pastor Kalina with our Open Door Minute. With a joyful celebration of this Christmas season in spirit, I want to thank you for joining us for this Christmas worship time. And I also want to invite you to join us again next Sunday online on YouTube at 10 a.m. for the premiere of our New Year Worship. Our in-person worship time is going to be 11.15, and it will be at First Salem United Methodist Church Sanctuary. Again, I'm going to repeat the time for our uh, worship time for next Sunday. Uh, on our YouTube worship, it's 10 a.m. Uh, that's the time when it is premiered. And our in-person worship time is 11.15 at First Salem United Methodist Church. Please also know that you can watch the uh, YouTube worship any time after 10 a.m. in the morning on Sunday. Now, again, I would like to wish you all the merriest Christmas and the happiest New Year. Thank you for worshiping with us this Christmas day. And I would like to end this worship time with these words of grace. May the grace of Emmanuel with us, the love of God, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit overflow your houses of hope and sanctuaries with hope, peace, joy, and love. In Jesus, the Emmanuel with us, we praise and pray. Amen. Amen.